So here's the biggest way that you're gonna make, first of all, a lot of people love you. Uh, second of all, you're gonna really start to get more referrals than you've ever had before. And it's very simple. You're gonna do a local business spotlight every 25th of the month. So to how, to how to prepare for this when we talk about a business spotlight is first, let's talk about what a spotlight is intended to do. Our intention for the business spotlight is to talk to someone in your database that knows you or doesn't, or that knows you, that owns a business. And if they don't own a business, that's going to refer you to a business. So uh, Anna, let's role play again, if you don't mind. Okay. So here's another reason to call. Hey, Anna, it's Brendan. How's everything going? Yeah, it's going good. How are you? Good, good. How's, how's Chris? How are the dogs? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're good. Liking the uh, snow the last couple of days, you know? No, this is crazy. Can you believe it's <laughs> April with all this snow? It's nuts. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, well, well, anyway, Anna, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Hey, I was calling. I wasn't sure if you're aware, but every month I do a local business spotlight where I feature one of my amazing you know, clients like yourself, or if they're not a client yet, where I, where I talk to someone amazing that I know that has a local business here that I can feature to help drive more traffic to your business. So I wanted to see if you might have interest in being featured in our June edition. Wow, um, that's really amazing. Thank you for thinking of me. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. Excellent, excellent. So if she says yes, then great. All I need to do, Anna, is I'll get back to you. First of all, you're just trying to see if it's right. So I'm going to get back to you here in a couple of weeks. We'll set up a time that works for you. I'm going to come over, interview you, talk to you about your business, the perfect client. Um, you know. Now, here's the thing. If, if you have the capacity, then you're going to have this done by video. So you either set up your phone. You can get a little mic like, well, like this. For $25 on Amazon, it plugs into your phone and you can mic them up and do this interview. There's actually on Amazon, there's a splitter one that splits it so it's two mics. So it has a 30 foot cord, right? I'm corded up right now. Uh, you wanna use the corded one. If you use the cordless one, it gets a little overly complicated. You have to worry about battery packs and all this stuff. This thing will split into a two thing, uh, two, so two microphones can be used at the same time. You plug that into your phone and you're going, but Brennan, my phone doesn't have an adapter for a microphone. The adapter is like six bucks. So there's an adapter that plugs into here that plugs into your phone. You have two microphones and you sit there, you put your, your camera on a little tripod or stick it against a book. If you're super cheap, right? Put it on a little tripod, hit the record button and you do a quick interview on them. So Anna, so talk to me a little bit about, so you, you do a uh, real estate coaching, right? That's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh that's my exciting. gosh. Well, that's exciting. How'd you get into that? Blah, 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 blah. We're not going to do this whole thing because of time, but I would go into this interview. If you don't know interview questions to ask people about their business, Google it. It's everywhere, right? We're not the first to create the business spotlight. We stole this from somebody else too, right? Like people do business spotlights. Uh, we modeled after someone. We didn't steal it. We modeled after them. So think about 10 questions. The video should be anywhere from a minute and a half to three minutes. That's about the attention span of anyone on earth. And that might seem really fast. Remember, you can always do more interview questions and then cut it later. If you want to do five minutes, do five. If you want to do a 10 minute video, knock yourself out, get crazy. We just know that the watch time is usually going to not be that much. Okay. So you're going to ask them some questions. Great, great, great. All of that's going to be recorded. Now, if you don't want to do video because you're worried about, you know, in your mind, you don't want to do video. You don't have to. You could go over and interview them. Think about how nice it's going to be, just like a, like a magazine. You're going to ask your questions, write down all the notes. Then you're going to draft a post that you're going to do on all of your social media featuring their business and do a write-up on them. You don't have to do video, so you're just going to do a write-up as if you were a reporter. And you're selling them on the fact that you have a huge social media following because you're in real estate. You're going to put it out to your entire database. Again, remember, they don't know how big your database is. Don't get caught up in numbers. I hear people be like, I have a database of 360 people. Like, don't tell them you have a database of 360. Be like, look, I have a massive database 
you know, from all the people I've been involved in in real estate, we're going to get you out to everyone. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to be a spotlight extravaganza, right? Sell it, sell it. So they're like, I'm special. I'm special. This is cool. I'm special. That's what we're trying to create is them feeling special. Because when I feel special, what am I going to do in return? I'm going to send you referrals and I'm going to hook you up. Think about anyone you know that anyone's ever called them and said, I want to feature you in my business spotlight. Now, here's the thing. What if they don't have a local company? What if they are a FedEx delivery driver, right? Okay, so this is how you play it. So if they do, and if hopefully you know this about them. If you don't know this about them, then, then I'll show you how to tiptoe tip through this. So if you call up, you go, look, I'm doing a local business spotlight. I know, I know um, Anna, you work for FedEx, so I'm not quite sure if I can really try to help you get more business to you. Um, and I wasn't quite sure. I mean, I know, I believe Chris does commercial contracting. So I'm not sure, would there be a way that I could feature him and drive more business to him? Now, let's say she says no again. She'd be like, no, I don't really think so. No worries. Well, I completely understand. Then Anna, let me ask you this. Who do you know that I should be featuring? Like when you think about great business owners here locally, who do you know that's phenomenal? Maybe it's a restaurant, a nail salon, a hairstylist, like a, a facialist or whatever, esthetician. I don't know what they're called, that facialist. I don't think it's right. Esthetician, right? Like yoga studio that you love, like whatever. Like who should I be talking to? I've never had anybody not rattle off somebody. They'll be like, you need to talk to Susie Swanson. She runs XYZ Yoga Studio. It's phenomenal. Anna, would you mind if I gave Susie Swanson a call and let her know that we talked and you said that she was amazing and asked her if I could feature her in my next spotlight? Now I just got another business connection through somebody, through a referral and that call to Susie Swanson. And Anna, you happen to know her number? I don't know the number, but here's the website. So I call up, look, Anna told me you were amazing, that you're the best yoga studio. I do this really cool business spotlight. I'd love to come and feature you. I feature somebody every month. I'd love to come by and feature you. Um, you, know, you know, do you have availability in June or would you maybe like to be featured in our July edition? Say edition, act like you're really big on this. If it's your first one, just act like it's the coolest thing ever. They don't know. They don't know. All right, get out of your head of like, oh, they're going to think that I don't have this down or whatever. Start small and build up to it. Start with 50 pounds and move up to 200 pounds. Cool? So, so that, was, that was the best way I can explain that. Uh, that's the best way I can explain that. Great. Well, well done, Brendan. That's the best way to go about making it a connection, even if they don't own a business themselves. Okay. So, so that's what we're doing. We're creating a business network of affiliates and through providing them with value, they then in return bring value back to us. Okay, so that's the whole point. All right, so we have that script too. We're not gonna go through it, but there's a script for that that's in our, in our, um, in our script book that you can do and that you can all take a look at. So here is just a sample of one of the videos we've done My name is Mark Callahan, and the company is Temper Chocolates and Confections. We think the world of chocolate, and we bring the world of chocolate to all of our local community here in Denver. Well, I've been in chocolate since 1991. I took over Temper in June of 2018. A good friend of mine started the Denver Central Market in October of 2016. Temper was one of the 11 vendors, original 11 vendors here in the market. We are pretty much the only company 
in Colorado on a retail basis that does the, what we do, the French style bonbons. We import all of our uh, chocolate from Belgium. We use the highest quality chocolate that we possibly can. I hire talented production folks who uh, actually paint the molds, create the fillings, uh, they cap the molds, and then we put them in our case. This is the only space at the Denver Central Market where we sell our bonbons. Here at the Central Market, everything that's produced behind me is in this case. So it's all of our bonbons. At any given time, we have about 23 different varieties of our bonbons for folks to choose from. We sell them in boxes of four, six, 12, and 24, or they can buy them individually. We also have our Puff Daddies, which are our vanilla bean marshmallows that we dip in Valrona chocolate and decorate them. We, uh, we bring in liege waffles from Belgium, which have sugar pearls in them, and then we decorate those. But in addition to that, around the perimeter, I buy chocolate bars from all over the world. First of all, our website, it's uh, tempercolorado.com. You can order online. Uh, we do have local Denver delivery, but we are in the midst of uh, creating a shipping platform to send uh, national. So any questions on that process or general real estate questions whatsoever that I might be able to shed some light on? Well, while all those brain juices are flowing as they come up with their questions, one did come through uh, in a message to me, and, and the question was about the business spotlight. Are there any kickbacks to working with these businesses? Do you do anything else with this like preferred business list? Do you ever send those businesses out as like you're the top businesses recommended by the Bardic Group? Or is it just simply you highlight them and that's the end of that conversation? Well, so kind of in twofold. So yeah, we definitely have an affiliated business partners list that, that we utilize internally. And uh, we don't give it out to everyone because again, we don't want to make this look not special. For that one month, this person was special. And that's what you're really trying to get after. If they know they were just another cog in this wheel and you're putting out all their info and doing all this stuff, I'm not trying to, to get any kickbacks or do anything else. I'm trying to go, look, I'm here to provide value to my clients in my community. If you ever feel like you want to reciprocate, do so, but I never say that. I'm going to overvalue them until they feel like a jerk by not reciprocating. Now, the other question is, well, what if their cousin is a realtor, should you not feature them? Of course not, don't feature them. If you don't think there's ever any way you're gonna do business with them, if, if, if you're calling somebody and you're featuring them in Business Spotlight and you find out that their husband is the top real estate agent, then probably not worth your time, money, or effort. And you gotta use some common sense here as well, right? So just think about that. But yeah, no, you shouldn't be looking at this just like the giveaway. Stop looking at it as a way to generate leads and start looking at it as a way to provide value. You have to come from a place of abundance. And when you come from a place of abundance, it's gonna come back to you. What else? Love that. How well, do you measure the, other... the leads with your drip campaign? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, go ahead, jump in. Yeah. So, all right, so Michael, our friend Michael says, how do you nurture the leads with your drip campaign after the contest, what CRM are you used, or what switch CRM are you using to facilitate? So we utilize Real Geeks. We've, we've utilized Real Geeks for years and years and years. And our, after we register people, we do a couple of things. We put them on a market report. So we use a company called Altos Research that provides really pretty market reports. Uh, well, a couple of things. First of all, let me take that a step back. If I wasn't able to find their address or anything about them, we use uh, um, a skip tracing a company to find out their home address. So we're super stalkers. Like we stock, we stock, stock hard. So if you don't have skip tracing information, then you can use truepeoplesearch.com and you're gonna try to find their home address if they weren't able to provide it to you. Because the first part of this is I wanna send them a handwritten uh, thank you card. So first part of the, the process is, thank you so much for, for uh, calling into our giveaway. Really hope that you win. If there's anything I can ever do to help you, please let me know. And then they go into the CRM and then they're gonna be put on a market report and then on, if I find their home address, they're gonna receive properties from every month 
that are a hundred thousand up or a hundred thousand dollars down. So if I think your house is five hundred grand, four hundred to six hundred thousand active homes in your neighborhood available for sale. I usually put their name in it. So Susan, active homes in your neighborhood currently for sale. Then that triggers every month. I don't do weekly. If you do weekly or daily, they'll unsubscribe. But a once a month touch is perfect. And don't forget, they're going to be getting another touch with the market report. So they're getting two touches a month now digitally from you right out of the gate. Um, and then we have a third uh, campaign that's just what we call a um, center of influence nurture campaign. It's a once a month email that we already put into the system that's just fluff about real estate. So what to do to get ready for spring, uh, winterize your house, um, best paint colors to use for selling. All of this we stole from other websites or Google or something, right? It was just, no, I mean, we bar borrowed it. We, we used their content. We give them credit for it, but we just, you know, it's fluff. It's just to stay in front of them and it's fluff content to make sure that they see it. So on any given month, they're actually getting three touches from us which you might be thinking in your head, that seems like a lot. It's not, right? As much as they're getting, and remember, 90% of it's probably going to a junk folder in their email. That's just the reality. If one thing gets through that they find a value, good for me. But don't get into this head that they're sitting there going, ooh, I got three emails from Brendan this month. That was a lot. They don't think about it like that. It's impossible, okay? So, so yeah, those are the touches there. Then... Um, they're receiving our once a month mailer, our, our actual direct mailer, if we have their home address, until we feel that they now have become a possible met. Now, when they raise their hand and they say, hey, look, I'm thinking, you know, I, I, I kind of have some interest here in buying or selling real estate with you uh, or referring business to you. Then we bring them into our 33 touch program where it's one phone call every 90 days. They get the market report. They get this. And then they get the big difference is five personal touches, which should, if I don't know anything about them, I'll find out their birthday and then four handwritten note cards every year until I can find four other touches of something else that's really important to them. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Veterans Day, National Cat Lovers Day, whatever it may be. Cool? Last question, Brendan, unless anyone chimes in. Um, what's the check down process of let's say someone refers you a business for the business spotlight how do you know they're going to be a how do you know you're going to actually do it with them yeah yeah so you, you still call them up and it, so again if it's something sketchy and you send sketchy you're just going to call up and say hey someone referred me to you blah 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 i was wondering if you would possibly be a good candidate for our business spotlight do you have a second for me to ask you a couple of questions Oh, who recommended us? Oh, Anna, she said you were the best yoga studio in town. Oh, that's so nice of her. Always give credit back to them because then when they see Anna at the studio, they're going to be like, oh my God, thanks, Anna. Then I just start asking them questions. Now, what we look for in a good business spotlight, this is a great question, actually. I should have brought this up earlier. We want to make sure they have a decent, if not great, social media following. So if somebody recommends an accountant to you that works out of his basement and literally plays Dungeons and Dragons, no offense to Dungeons and Dragons, but um, that's just a joke, but they're on, they're not on like social media in a heavy way, probably doesn't make sense to feature them in your business spotlight because you're not going to get any traction out of those posts, right? Possibly, right? Unless he's a public accountant and he's really heavy on social media, you're not going to get a lot of exposure out of those um, videos, okay? You're trying to daisy change this. The biggest thing with the business spotlight is when you tag that person, then it shows up on their social. They share it with all of their friends and family because they're like, can you believe I was featured in the local business spotlight? Look at me, I'm so cool. Then grandma, Susie, aunts, all of this see the Barta group, 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 the Barta group. So that's a great point is you don't wanna necessarily do this if they're not that. So that's one. Number two, is if you just don't think it fits, right? Like if you don't feel like this is somebody that you either want to be in business with, like for example, you know, we, we've had questions about, well, if they have a weed shop, right? So, so you know, I, have a, I, have a, I sell weed. Okay, well, that might be interesting. I don't know how publicly that's going to look to all of my clients if I'm featuring a local marijuana dispensary. If all of your clients smoke weed, then maybe that works for you. If you have a very non-weed smoking client base, that might offend some people that your feet that have a lot of you know feelings about this. I don't know. I don't know if I would feature a local gun shop. I'm just saying, not that I don't you know feel some type of way about guns, but I don't know how my how how neutral that's going to work to my database. 
versus chocolate, right? Versus chocolate. You don't like <laughs> chocolate, you're a monster. I mean, what's the problem, right? So, so these are great questions. Yeah, kind of just feel it out. We've had also things like, like waxers, right? My girl, she's a great waxer. She does bikini waxes. That's a tough business spotlight. Not that we can't do it. Video makes it tough, right? Because it's like, okay, you, you wax personal parts. I don't know how that's going to look in a video. That might not be the right way to go. Okay. So yeah, those are, those are things that we passed on just because we're like, it doesn't maybe make sense. Yeah. And then the other question on the business spotlight that came up was, do you guys kind of, so you highlighted my yoga studio, let's say, for example, does the team, do you, Brendan, send me kind of a check down of how I can share this? How much do you partner to make sure the business is leveraging this as much as you guys are? Yep. And we can probably put that out on our our, our Brendan Bardock Real Estate Coach uh, Coaching Facebook page is, yeah, we have a whole check down that says, after we feature you, here's the best way to get the exposure for you with this, with this spotlight. Because if you don't tell them what to do with it, they're going to be like, cool, I got a spotlight. So we just always want to make sure, hey, so you can get the most exposure out of it. Tells them how to share it, how to post it, where we've seen the most success, you know, all of those things. That's a great point. And yes, is you have, to, you have to make sure they get it, right, on how to, how to leverage it. And then other than that, just common sense, be nice, thank people, a handwritten note card afterwards, after you did the spotlight saying, Hey, that was amazing. I really appreciate you taking 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I mean, when we do the full video, it takes two to three hours to, to do the entire filming for some of these people, depending on how elaborate we go, but they feel like king or queen for the day. You show up with a videographer and just hire some local wedding photographer or some kid that's trying to get his, his, you know, degree at what XYZ college in filmmaking hire them for 500 bucks for the day and make this business spotlight person feel like they are the coolest kid in town. They'll love it. They'll love it. And who are they going to talk to every time somebody comes into their chocolate store? If somebody even mentions buying or selling real estate, they'd be like, Oh my gosh, you've got to talk to Grant. You know, he's amazing or Jordan or Lily or Leilani or whoever it might be. Right. She's absolutely the best in the business. You'd be stupid not to do real estate with them. In closing, we're trying to create fans that would kill for you, right? That would go to bat for you. They hear somebody talking about real estate and they interrupt their conversation and say, hey, I heard you talking about buying or selling. If you don't speak to Michael, you're out of your mind. That's what we're trying to create. Don't over automate, try to over personalize over personal. So I hope that was helpful, everyone. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or anything else about coaching, real estate, go to brendanbardic.com, check out all of our different products. We have everything under the sun to help your listing presentation, your CMAs, expireds, whatever you want to do to take your business to the next level. We love you. As always, we wish you great success. Mm-hmm.